the cues. So let's go all the way back. First, I want to go back to when this run really started taking off. Can everybody see the chart? I'm going to go way back here. Can everyone see the chart? Something down here. I want to get to the place where I'm going to start talking. Okay, back in 2015, it was the summer of 2015. If you were trading at the time, you might remember it. The market had a huge gap down in the summer, and it was it was some kind of reaction to something that had happened overseas in China. Now, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm going to explain to you very briefly. A stock gap, so the, or the market, which we're talking about the Qs, which is an ETF, when the closing price one day is different from the opening price the next day. That's all a gap is. So this day here, it was August 21st. The QQQs closed at 102.40. Okay? The next day, this was on a Monday. So this was Friday. This was on a Monday. On the Monday, the market opened at... 94.23 so that gapped down so we were we actually closed on the friday night okay at 102.40 and we opened about eight dollars down in the on the day in the morning on, to start the week that is actually a decent size gap for the overall market because the market gaps almost every day but it's rare that the market has a substantial gap in it and this was substantial, okay? It was, it was very noticeable. I don't think anybody that traded didn't notice it. There were a lot of stocks down in the day that morning. And I remember, and, and if you don't know me, I'll tell you right now, I do like to short. And that's why I teach the, the class on shorting every month and only do the bullish one once a year. But I will tell you that we didn't short that day. I didn't short that day. I didn't tell anyone to short in the room because it was a very volatile time. When something like that happens, you never know what to expect. So it's abnormal circumstances. I can't go back in my Orbis charts, which I love, but I can't go back to this long in the one minute. But I watched it, and I will tell you that this, okay, open, dropped, fell. You can see, well, you can see the low, but I just can't show you the one minute bars. The low in this day was 84.74. All of that happened in the first couple minutes of the trading day. It all happened like in the first 15 minutes of the morning. So the, not only did the market gap down $8 on that day, then it fell another 10 into the open between 9.30 and 10 in the morning, okay? Which is, you know, I wouldn't say catastrophic, but very, very scary for people to see the market react that way. The SPY did the same thing. We'll look at that chart later, but I'm just looking at the cues right now. Anyways, it reversed. It actually got bought. Now, I'm going to just show you this here. So the tail was made by buying because when we when we opened here, we fell like a brick. And again, I can't show you the one minute chart, but I'm telling you I watched it, and that's what it did. And if you if you were trading this day, you noticed it too. It This happened in the first beginning part of the morning, and then it got bought. The market, now I'm squishing these together here so you can see it, has never looked back since that moment. Actually, what happened that day is the market opened and swooshed something called the stock swoosh, which was what I named my company, and then it negated the swoosh all at the same time, which is extremely, extremely powerful. And despite the fact the market opened that day $8 down and then fell $10 in the morning, it was a very bullish action that happened on that day for the market to recover from such a big gap down and then get bought like that and drop that hard in the morning and then get bought and then hold, and it's held ever since. And now here we are, it's, it's not August yet, so in a couple of months it'll be two full calendar years. But that was the beginning of a monster move that has pretty much taken place in the market and is still going and I still foresee it continuing to go. Now, then we had the election. So 2015, bullish, 2016, 2016, let me find the day in here. Here, this was the day after the election. So what happened is, 
again, you can't really see this here, but the market in the pre-market, the post-market, the pre-market was down more than this. We did gap down then on this day of the election. But then we, we actually recovered. We had a nice recovery then by the time the morning opened in the market. And we have taken off ever since. So this was the end of 2016, November, December. And look at what we've done. This is, here, let me find the first day of the year just to show you. Here's one three. So actually, the low here, look, 118.89 was the low of the first day of the year. We are nowhere near that now. Today's closing price, 137.07, if that's if that's correct, or that might be the post market here. Look at what we've done. This is this year. Boom. But you but you also notice there's not a lot of massive green bars here. Lots of greens, but not any big fat long greens, but hardly any reds. In fact, let's just count just for the sake of so how many red days there are in the market. This is very interesting. I, I've never let me just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24. <laughs> Let me write that down. There's only been 24 days with any red at all in them this whole year. That's unbelievable to me. Wow, I, I, I just realized that now as I'm talking. So the point is we're very bullish, okay? So if you're looking to trade, what do you do? Because if you're clearly, if you're looking at this, no one would disagree with me. The market hasn't been trading up higher and higher and higher. And if you're looking at this, you're thinking, gosh, how can I go long? We're extended, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, although I'm not reading it that way, but I'm sure people are saying we're extended. How can I go long? I can't short this, you say to yourself. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do in a bullish market? Well, the answer is easy. You look for specific stocks. Very, very specific stocks to trade. You read the direction of those specific individual stocks and you play them in the correct direction on that given day and you make money. If you want to do an overnight trade, an option trade or a swing trade, I believe that the best thing possible for you to do is to be with the market, which would mean to be in longs overnight or option trades as calls in a, in a long position moving higher but they still have to be strong stocks. You still can't buy anything in the world and go long and make money or expect to make money in this market, despite the fact that we are up and despite the fact that we're higher. Now, I did a video on YouTube. I don't know if, how many of you follow me on YouTube. And there was a lady that called me. She's, she's an older lady. She's been following me for a long, 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 long time. Actually, she just called me now. I just missed a call from her. I, I, she's been following me since almost the beginning. She has been in this stock here long. It's rig, okay, since 2015. Her price in this stock, she has 5,000 shares. She's in a swing trade. She's in an overnight position. It's not a day trade. It's not an option. So she's in it, and it could go to zero. But she's in it with a price of 16, so she's underwater. The stock today had earnings and it gap down again, and I spoke to her earlier. I said, you actually could have shorted the stock today. I could have shorted this as a short, as a day trade, and she still isn't getting, getting out of the trade. So she's down $30,000 in this, in this. But she bought it at a time when everything was starting to recover at that period in 2015. In fact, let me go back and look at this chart. I'll show you this here, when she, which is the area when she bought it. That time, that time in the summer, after the bounce happened, and things were starting to move back up again and recover, and people thought, thought they were buying the dip. Okay, so people thought that it was great, and it was a good idea, and it was a fabulous idea to go long, okay, after that bounce happened. And we'll look at the spy in a minute, too. So she went long, this, this rig in here, okay, with a, with a, with a very large position, actually. And she's been suffering in it and down in it every 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 day since for two years. And I and she hasn't gotten out of the trade yet. But it's not a good trade. It's not a good trade because it's been down for a very long time. It's also not a good trade. Why? 
because this stock, this chart is in a downtrend. This chart is in a clear, clear downtrend, and I just got done showing you the overall market, which is making new highs almost every single day. In fact, we didn't do it today, but we got close. So 137.43 today, one, three, six pennies away from making another new high in the queues. But she bought at that same period here where a lot of people were thinking it was going to be the low in certain stocks. So do you see it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter that a lot of things have rallied since then or recovered. Not everything will. So same concept here, what I'm telling you right now for 2017 for picks and cho choices that you want to do for things you want to invest your money in. You still, even if I tell you right now, which I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now the market's higher. Don't even think that we're extended. And I'm not saying that we're not going to pull into support. I'm not saying we're going to go straight up like an arrow, which we actually have done, by the way. All right. We don't even need to do that. Whether we come in a little a baby support or a mini support and make a new support or pull all the way back or do whatever, it doesn't matter. We're still, we're still higher in the market. I see all of 2017 and all of 2018 and actually for, for the foreseeable future that the market will continue because I, I truly believe that a new area is being created in the market. Um, that is going to hold and stick for a very long time and it's just in the process of being created so it's almost like people can't even see it but I'm, I'm seeing that having happened here so even though you may not be long stuff you have plenty of time to go long but you still have to pick quality things and I'm talking about overnights okay and you still can't buy crap so what do you do in a bullish market you look for specific specific things to trade that are quality that you can predict the direction they're going to go because not everything is going to go with the market you want to go long strong stocks and even stocks that you think can't go any higher can okay case in point google all right it was an option trade i called yesterday morning it flew it flew flew like a bird okay 16 points almost over the strike and this the option still has another week left in it although i think most people are out of it because it had such a monster move but i called this in here in the morning on this day yesterday five three the stock broke out and came out in here and this is google this had earnings last week gapped up huge on the earnings fell on the day of the earnings a tiny tiny bit gap down right after the earnings did gap down gap down didn't even hold the gap down I mean, didn't even fall in the gap down, held, flipped, rallied, and has bought ever since. The low on this day here was 901. This stock has rallied 36 points in four days after gapping up 30 some points, or was it more? 875, basically 40 points. So Google has gone from the day before the earnings, had earnings Thursday night. Again, I focus on gaps, but it closed at 874. Today's high was what? 935. 35 and 25, 60 some points. That's crazy, people. It's so crazy that I love it. So the bottom line is, and I'm just seeing this in here now. Look at this. This is a gap up. This is a gap up. This gapped up. Look at this. This stock is, you think this stock can't keep going? Yes, yes it can. It absolutely can. It can, okay? So the point is that even if you think I can't go long, good quality stuff because they're already gone, I have to go long crap, that isn't the right philosophy. You still have to go long good quality things if you're gonna go long. And if you don't wanna go long, you don't feel comfortable doing that because things are up a lot, then short, okay? So decide what you want to do in this bullish market, but don't go long stuff that is absolute crap, which this is. And I told Patty it's crap, but she hasn't gotten out of it yet. She has not gotten out of it, and she's insisting that she is going to recover. I, it's, I, to me, I don't think it is, and it may never get anywhere near $16 again. So it is, it is, it, this is a very, very challenging time for traders who really are not very good at reading charts, which I, which I am, okay, which I luckily am. But for people that are, aren't good at reading charts, they're confused because they, they think things can't keep going and they can, and I'm calling them, I'm calling them higher and they're, they're running up like banshees. And then people also 
are afraid to short because they don't want to short anything in a bullish market, but that's not true either. Today, AVP was the play of the day in the trading room. Look at this bar. This fell like crazy. I got out of this in the morning and it kept falling. So you can still short stocks in a bullish market, but you have to have the specific right, correct stock symbol, the right pick, okay? But not everything is gonna rally with the market. And Regan is, a, is an example. There's other examples. There's another one I did, was this yesterday? Yeah, it was just yesterday. Here, again, now this, this didn't gap up, it gapped down, but it did gap up previously here. It didn't go anywhere. Couldn't get the momentum under it. This was back in February, this is Groupon. People here probably thought this was another good buy, but it wasn't. And people probably thought, well, the market's rallying, the market's rallying, and da 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 da, da. What did Facebook end up doing today? Let me see how that closed. Oh, that was the next point I want to make. For, actually, uh, before I get to the next point I want to make here, the next uh, teachy topic, what, does anyone have any comments or questions about what I said before I get into the next thing? Because those two other things I want to talk about. Any questions from anyone? Is anyone there? Is anyone listening to me? Is everyone mesmerized? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go to the next topic then. The next topic that I wanted to, no questions. Okay. Thank you, Chinchilla. The next topic I want to get to is there were two things that had earnings out this week that were noticeable. Um, the one is Facebook. The other one is Apple. So what happened to Facebook today? It gapped down. It didn't gap down that much, but it did gap down. The stock closed. This was last night. I guess it had the earnings. It closed at 151.80. It opened in the morning here at what? 157.17. So it wasn't a crazy, crazy big gap down, but it was noticeable enough. It did have a short move in the morning. It did fall, but it didn't gap down that much. I don't know what the fundamentals are in this. I didn't read the report. I didn't listen to it or don't know why it gapped down. It did won the report, which it did. But the point is it gapped down, but it didn't go anywhere. It had one quick move in the morning and then flipped. Apple did something extremely sil sim similar, except for even more bullish, okay? This was two days ago, Apple gapped down two in the earnings, closed the night before here at 147.51, opened the next day down here, not quite $2, 145.59, fell in the morning quick, and then flipped and actually was more bullish than Facebook because it went full on green. And it's not that far away, again, from getting up over the high. Both of these stocks gapped down Apple and Facebook on earnings and are almost close to getting up again to make new highs after the trading day, the closing day after the earnings. So do you see these two charts? And I'm just gonna blow them up here. This is Facebook. Again, point in fact. People probably thought it was too, too much to go long this stock at any point in here, 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 and look at it. It's not extended, it's still going higher. Apple, very similar, although Facebook actually looks stronger. Here. Again, you could have gone long this bullish gap in Apple in February and you would still be in the trade and the low is 127-ish, and it's ran up 26 points, and this is just since February. February, March, April, 90 days in a couple. 90 plus days, barely. The stock has gone up like crazy. Again, you could count the red bars in this just like we did in the queues. So do you see how this is something you can make money on this is, this is not something that you can make money on going long. I'm talking about going long now. So when you want to go long stocks 
And again, if you want to be in an overnight, I really think it's critical now to be in, in, in the bullish movement, in the bullish direction, to be overnight with the market directional bias. Not that you have to go be in anything overnight, like an option or swing chain, but I'm just saying, I think it's extremely important to be with the market trend right now. It is so strong. There's nothing stopping it, okay? But you've got to still be in a quality pick. So I, I determine my picks, which I teach in the class, based on a rating system. And that's what tells me whether something's a good pick short or a good pick long. And sometimes I'll do something on the day and that's it. And it's not a good long-term trade, bullish or bearish, as a day trade, because I, I do the day trading every day. But I'm talking about two things now. If you want to do overnights, you want to do day trading. If you want to day trade, you still have to pick quality things because you have to get in that stock in the right direction because things do tend to go with the market. And if you're going to short stuff, then it's got to be 100% on its own, not involved with the market at all, not affected by the market at all. Or you take it and you have the move in the morning and you get out quick, which is usually what I wanted to do anyways, even though this, this AVP thing kept going. This was really a good one today. It rated very well. But anyways, you got to make your money and just take it when it comes to you in quality quality picks if you if you don't have the patience to to wait for a pullback you don't need to to go long stuff you can go long the gap but you can't go long every bullish gap because if you had gone long this this gap here actually we would have lost on the day which was the day of the earnings so google gapped up it was a valid gap to rate I, I don't day trade Google, Google, but I'm just using this chart as an example. It could have been anything. It could have been, you know, Microsoft or something. In fact, look at Microsoft. The point was you can't go long every bullish gap. You still have to have a way to do it. It is more important than ever to pick quality things that you're doing because the market's so strong and people are struggling now. They don't know what to do. And for some reason, and I have no idea why, actually, before I make that point, let me just get back to the Facebook and the Apple. I know I'm jumping all over here, but I'm talk, I have a lot in my head. The, the Facebook and Apple is just, is just, uh, it's just glaring to me. And I realized that this morning in the room when I was talking how bullish the market is because those stocks got down in the earnings and they didn't fall a bit. And not only did they not hardly fall, they, they flipped and got bought. So it's just, it's just glaring to me how strong the market is because all these stocks are market leaders, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, all these things are, are market leaders. In fact, let's look at Tesla next too. They're all market leaders. Okay. So they are driving the market up. Yeah, so Microsoft here actually, was this the day of Apple, the 24th? No, what was this? Maybe that was Microsoft earnings. I don't even, I have to go back and look. So I want to look at what happened on the 24th here. Or was this just a gap up? And maybe this was earnings of Microsoft. Let me look at Tesla. Anyone have any comments or questions about anything I'm saying as well? Now this what this did gap down today. I did see it. Of course, I didn't short this at this price point. Um, I just want to see here if there's an option trade in this or not. Well, this will be one to watch. This hasn't changed the trend in here at all yet, but this will be a watch one. This did fall hard today. I mean, there's no two ways about it. But this stock has had a big, big move here, and so it's still in an, it's still in a solid uptrend. It'll be interesting to see what this does. I, I will watch this the next few days. So don't, don't short this, don't go long this, leave this be. But you could have shorted as a day trade today. I just typically don't trade things that expensive. Um, but that'll be one for me to watch. Uh, Dale is saying, how many shares do you decide to take in a $60 stock compared to an $8 stock for shorter or long trade? Well, it depends on the size of the stop. You never know the size of your stop till the stock opens and sets up. You don't know. So for example, today in AVP, and this was, this was one you could have just taken you know, a million if you got filled. <laughs> if you could have gotten filled a million shares. Here, hold on. Um, because it was so cheap. This one in it it depends on the size of your stop. That varies on every trade, on every day, and every stock, and I don't know that until after the open, until the live day. So I can give people an estimate, and I usually give people an estimate. I usually say, I think this is going to be 30 cents or 35 cents, or it could be 20 cents, or it could be a dollar. I usually give people an estimate, and I'm not far off. I don't know. Galahad can, can tell me that. I don't think I'm far off with that. Anyways, the one today was boom, doom. And I even gave us a little more room. 15 by 30 was the one in this here today. 
So it was 15 cents. But if you're gonna if you're gonna short a sixty dollar stock, I'm not saying you can't get a you can't get an entry for for fifteen cents in a sixty dollar stock, but it's probably going to be thirty five to fifty. I'm guessing on a one minute chart for the entries I do for the day trades, and this is whether you're going long or short. I'm talking about just the entries. So you see, it's different. You will you will be you will have larger stops typically typically with stocks that are more expensive than stocks that are smaller. But your risk amount is the same. If you're risking $500 a trade, that's what you're risking. You're just gonna to get to have more share quantity in something like AVP than you will in something that's a higher price stock. But if the stock's gonna be bigger anyways, and if your risk is $500, your share quantity is gonna be based on your risk, which would be $500 if that's what you're risking, or 1,000. You have to figure it out. You either have a cheat sheet next to you, which you give people in the class, or you have a calculator. You figure it out in your head. Okay, but bottom line is, it's it's it doesn't even matter because usually the stops from more expensive stocks are, um, are are actually bigger stops. You know what I'm saying? So the chances of you of you getting a ten cent stop and a sixty dollar stop that you'd be able to take, you know, five six thousand shares of it and need three four hundred thousand dollars in buying power. You know, is I can't I can't think of one. I'm not gonna say never because there's never a never in the market, but that it would you you wouldn't even matter. So I always tell people the buying power you probably need for a day trading account is about a hundred thousand. I don't remember what I what I rated AVP on Galahad. I don't think I I don't know if I have it here in this sheet or if I have it on my other sheet. I already put my sheets away for the day. We can look at that tomorrow. But anything over 20 gets gets the rating. So whether it was 20, 21, whatever, it's, it, it's, it was good enough to short. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is what do you do in a bullish market? You can still short stocks. Oh, that's the other point I wanted to make. That's the other point I wanted to make. You can still short stocks, okay? So you can still short stocks in a bullish market if you find the right things, okay? But you, but you got to find the right quality. So what I, what I find when I'm talking to a lot of people, people are saying, well, gosh, I can't, I can't short in this market. It's, everything's too strong and everything is too strong and it's too strong, it's too strong, it's too strong. No, not everything is too strong. That's the point. Whether the market was bullish or bearish, let's just say fast forward 10 years from now, and I'm just making this up. I'm not predicting this. I'm not saying this. I'm just talking now to make a point. Fast forward 10 years from now, the market does turn bearish doesn't mean you're gonna be able to short everything in the world doesn't mean that at all you still will have to find quality things to short the point I'm making about the overall market and overnights is if you're in a, a position okay which which Patty's in the ring take a clue if it's not move if you're down in the position and it's not moving up and the market's strong, there's a problem. Get out, okay? It's not working. You have to acknowledge sometimes when you're in a bad trade and you have to take a loss, and everyone should have stops. Whether it's a paper stop or a real stop, you gotta have a kill point where you're saying, oh, my Lanta, I'm out of this thing, Ugh, you know? Because you can't let a whole entire position, you know, take all of your money away in your account. That would be so foolish. Just like you shouldn't take, let option trades go to bust. Okay? So the point is that um, you got to pick quality things to do. There's, there's two points. A, pick quality stocks. B, if you're going to be in an overnight with a swing trade, an option trade, try to be with the market direction, which in this case with Google was up. Okay? If you take something and the market is going and the stock is not going with it, then the bottom line is recognize if you're down in the position and if you've been in it for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, which is actually a long time, that something's wrong with it and maybe you need to kill it and maybe it's a bad trade. It's not going to work. Well, Galahad was saying, I originally I called the, let me, I'll go over the AVP again. AVP originally I called 35, but then I lowered it to 30. It was neither here nor there for this one though for whatever you did with it. 15 cents, 20 cents, it's a great, great stop. This is a very, very 
good entry in this. We, we, I mean, the only way that we could have gotten a better price in this is if we had taken it on the open, <laughs> which I wasn't going to do because I never do. And I actually thought it was going to rally first and it didn't. And, and thank God I pressed the button. So normally you would, you would, you would wait till it triggers. I'd never get in at 930. Now in this one here today, I did not get filled full size, but I tried. I could have kept press, pressing the button to, to press me to get in, but the sucker fell so quick and so hard and so fast that I just left it be. So I killed the rest of the position in this. I didn't get filled the whole amount. So I tried to get 5,000 shares of it. I didn't get filled the whole amount. Some people did get filled full size in it today. Some people didn't either. It was just so weak. So that's rare for me, but it was a cheap stock and it was down a lot. And I mean, it just fell like a brick. And I actually held this a little bit longer than I normally would. So I, I, I got a good move in this here today. And you could have done a second setup in it. You actually could have shorted this here late in the morning, in the afternoon, and look where it went. And you probably would have gotten filled full size in here because it had it had some backup in here. When that happens, and I told people, you can leave the order sit. I didn't do it because I didn't know if it was going to pop over the high or not, and I didn't want to get hurt. But you can leave the order sit, and when you get the greens, when you get the pushback, it will fill you into the order. That didn't actually even happen here early today. So I don't think it would have mattered if I had the order sit. I probably wouldn't have gotten filled here. But I didn't, I didn't want it. I didn't want it to drop and I didn't want to get a horrible price in it. And that, you know, that's what I try to avoid if I don't get filled full size, but it's rare that happens. But this was a very cheap stock. I mean, it's, this week we did two very, very cheap things that you could have taken a lot of size. One was this and the other was Groupon. And actually I, I got, I got everything I wanted in the Groupon. So it was the AVP I didn't get full in. But normally you would size yourself for what? whatever the difference is between the entry and the stop. So if I'm calling it 15 by 30, that's 15 cents. 15 by 35, that's 25 cents or 20, yeah, 20 cents. So you have to figure out your sizing based on that. So if you risk $1,000, normally your trains and your stop's 20 cents, you'll go for 5,000 shares. If your risk is 500, you'll take 2,500 shares. It's the difference between the entry and the stop. So I pulled it down tighter on this today from 20 to 15, but it didn't matter. It's still a very, very, very tight stop. So you will have ones like Microsoft. There's no, there's no short play in here to show you an example that I've done recently, but even if you would go long the stock in here, it's the same principle. The entry, and the stop is how your size and your position and your risk should be the same cash-wise on almost every trade you take. So looking at, looking at all of these charts and looking at the market, whatever you decide to do, what, and I'll take some questions here, let me just get my point out. Whatever you decide to do in this market, I think it's important to be in overnights with the market directional bias, but the, the stock still has to be strong. If you're in something and you think that the stock is strong, you're down in the position, the market is higher and in a bullish market and it's not moving, you're down in the position, then you should get out. It's not right. And if you want to day trade actively, you can, you can still short, which I do every single day. Things are still selling off like they normally would, like AVP, but you still have to pick good quality things to do. It doesn't matter if you want to go long or if you want to short. You have to pick quality, quality stocks. And maybe, maybe you don't, maybe if you don't feel comfortable, Okay, doing overnights right now because you're not sure what to go long because you feel like everything that's strong is up so much, then don't. Then just day trade. Then now let now be the time where you day trade, where you get in and you get out quickly on the day and you read the read the gap on the live day and do it. Or if you have some other method. I mean, I I trade only gaps and I'm in that day and I'm out. But if you don't feel comfortable going long at this point with the market, you certainly can't short this market. You can't do it. You can't short stocks like Google and you can't short stocks like Amazon and you can't short the overall market and people are going to do it. They are going to do it and they're probably going to do it in a second or getting ready to do it. I mean, the spy looks like it's going to, in fact, I mean, look at this. I didn't even see how we closed here. I need to look at this. I, I wish there was something else here I could call long and an option. This looks like a breakout play. This looks like the spy is going to break out tomorrow. It's Friday. If we don't gap up tomorrow and explode over the high, we'll do it next week. I, there's no way this isn't going to do it. This is probably going to do it tomorrow. It's 5.09. I just saw how we close.
We could gap up tomorrow morning. We could gap down tomorrow morning and rally. We could gap neutral. There's no way we're not higher. We could just do it poof, right tomorrow. I can't even, this Google is probably going to keep it going. This is really, this was ridiculousness. If the market goes over the high, this Google is going to go to 950. It'll go another day. I don't even know what I could call in here. This is like, what do I even, this just, this is just so crazy. But the spy looks like it's going to pop and break out and go right over the high. I don't even know what to, this is just so crazy. It's just here, maybe. Uh, I got to see how things gap in the morning. I want to see what the market does. Between now and the next week, the spy is going to just break out over the high. It's a breakout play. It's going to go, it's going to explode. Um, do I trade both options and stocks? Yes, but I prefer to day trade daily. If I do an option trade, it's not every day. Very specific, not daily. I short stocks daily or occasionally I will go long a bullish gap. So that's the reason I don't teach the bullish gap class all the time. But I will tell you, my bullish gap class is extremely, extremely valuable because not all the points are the same. Because not everything is the same when you're looking at a long or you're looking at a short, number one. And number two, because I've gotten so good at shorting, I'm extremely good at reading longs. How do you think I called this thing? This was a long. I mean, I read the gap. So, you know, I short every day of my life. And I've been, I mean, I'm... All I do is short, mostly, 99.9% .9 of the time. And I have called this market so well, bullishly, and ca I'm calling these phenomenal, phenomenal options trades. All are bullish. Netflix was another one. And you say, well, how is this girl that likes to short calling these incredible stocks higher? Because it's the gap. Because it's the gap itself. It's the gap. It's the points. It's the points. It's the gap. It's the chart. It's the price action. I'm seeing the institution of buying. I can see what buying looks like because I know what selling looks like. I know what weakness looks like, so I know when I don't see it. And I know what strength looks like, too. So get good at one directional bias, and then you can do the others because you do have to know how to do both. You can't, you can't become a trader without knowing how to do both sometimes because I'm telling you, there's huge opportunities here. Whether you do options or swing trades or whether you just look at your, your, your statement, if you have a 401k, to look at stuff and decide what to be invested in. And there are specific stocks that it would be, you know, it is good time to be invested in. If you have other people investing money for your stock brokers or whatever, you should be looking over your statements if you're a trader and you should be looking over things and you should be looking at the charts and seeing if it's crap. Because if I had an, a, a broker, which I don't because I trade my own money, but if I had anybody had me in crap like this, I'd fire them immediately. And I'm sure there's people out there that have people in crap because they think they're going to turn around because of the market, but they're not. They're not because they're not and they aren't. And if they do, it'll be whenever they do, which is not right now, and it's completely unpredictable. It is not predictable to see that the stock will go anywhere near 16. I tried to tell Patty that, and she still hasn't killed the trade, and I just can't believe she hasn't killed the trade. She signed up for the option letter, and she did Google, and she didn't. She got out and made 500 bucks, but she's down in this trade 30 grand. I said, Patty, if she had done 5,000 shares of Google, she would have made $35,000 yesterday, not even holding it. She's hanging on to a loser. And she's taking good trades now with me and getting quick out, scared like a rabbit. Very hard to combat bad habits, but, you, you know, I really train people very, very well to do that when they're in the room with me. Can you shorten your 401k or IRA account? You have to ask your broker. I have a regular day trading account. I don't think you can, but I would ask someone specifically that's a broker. There are certain rules and certain requirements and I think you can't actually take a short but you can buy a put you can buy a put trade so in, in, in which would be not sh which would be a shorting essentially but you'd be buying a put but that's something to ask your broker Dale all right good luck everybody so we'll see what happens. I did, I just saw this how this is this looks crazy. I don't know, it's too late to call any trades now for anybody to do any because the market's closed. But I'll have to watch some things tomorrow morning. We'll see what they do. If we don't break out tomorrow morning over the high in this fire, we will, we will any second. In fact, I'll here I'll tell you a prediction right now. If we don't break out tomorrow over the high, no matter how we gap in the morning, we do we gap we gap Monday morning up over the high. That's what I think happens. So it's one of two. Either we're going to trade tomorrow and run right over the high, or Monday morning we'll get up and we'll be over 240. There you go. You just heard it here. 
Can you buy a call option in the spot? Yes, it's too late. You can do options in the market till 4.30 or 4.15, I think it is. 4.15, I think it's a cutoff. Or maybe it's 4.30, I forget. In the queues in the spot, but it's even too late now. So just wait, wait till the morning. I'll look at some things in the morning and see what, what, what's, what's doable here. But yes, you can. You can, but you can't right now. What I what I'd like is something another another Google kind of thing something something I could something that I really see that looks crazy because this 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 moved ten points literally in a millisecond of profit um, so I don't know I don't have any ideas here but we'll wait till the morning all right good job everybody thanks for coming have a great night i'm gonna go sit by my window and watch trump he's visiting here in new york and i'm gonna take pictures outside my window it's gonna be fun and interesting there's helicopters everywhere fbi so i'm gonna have a nice glass of wine and sit outside and look at the look at the hudson river and all the action <laughs> all right have a great night everyone you're welcome